There are many, 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 many bad things that can happen in Formula 1. Some may be 100% somebody else's fault. And others can be absolutely your fault, your mistake. My bad, just own up to it. But a driver being screwed over by his own team might be one of the worst things that can happen in Formula 1. That's like your father going up to you and putting a gun to your head. The betrayal. Why on earth would you do that? Unless the son is some mass serial killer or rapist or whatever. Then I guess, sure thing. Pull the trigger. But a driver being screwed over isn't the greatest thing for the driver, isn't the greatest thing for the team, usually. And the screw over might not just be for a short amount of time, it might be their entire career. And we're seeing a lot of screw overs in 2024. So, welcome to the art of screwing Formula One drivers over. Carlos Sainz throughout his entire Formula One career has been slowly, slowly, slowly building his way up to the top. Started in Toro Rosso, a pretty, pretty bad team, somehow managed to weave himself out of that Red Bull family, went over to McLaren, which was a big step up from whatever that Toro Rosso was, and started to score podiums. Wait, we're seeing some talent in this guy, aren't we? No. What the fuck? A couple years past the McLaren, and let's be real, McLaren back then, they weren't going anywhere. They were very, very mid. So obviously the next step from McLaren being a pretty mid team would be a top tier team. And Ferrari came to rescue. Throughout the years that Carlos Sainz was in Ferrari, not only was he pretty much always similar pace level to Charles Leclerc, maybe a tad slower, and he was definitely always similar in points. Keep in mind, he managed to dethrone Red Bull's winning ways in Singapore. Carlos Sainz, tactical brilliance. Carlos Sainz, the winner of the Singapore Grand Prix. And then do it yet again in Australia with a 1-2 finish. And there was other wins sprinkled in, podiums, many, many podiums, and many, many successful days. But then it all stops in literally like 30 seconds. One day, he's in hospital, nearly bleeding out on the ground. The next day, he's winning a race. A Ferrari 1-2, headed by Carlos Sainz. And the next day, he's finding out that he's being dropped from Ferrari. <laughs> oh, you might be thinking that's a tiny bit unfair. But if I were to say that Lewis Hamilton was entering Ferrari, then probably all of you guys would say, fair enough. And fair enough it was, because Charles Leclerc obviously being faster than Carlos Sainz, Lewis Hamilton obviously being faster than Carlos Sainz. I guess it kind of makes sense. But the way Carlos Sainz has been screwed over is pretty much unfathomable to the mere human brain. One year, aka 2024, he's winning races standing on podiums. Next year, he might not even be in the sport. A driver that throughout his entire career has been working his way up and up and up and up. And now he's literally about to plummet into the ground like a NASA rocket ship. I don't know, like a me it's going to be like a meteor. And the explosion's going to be the tears of finding out next year that number one, you're not either in the sport, or two, you're stuck in a Williams, which is going to be awful, or you're going to be stuck in a Sauber Audi, which who knows whether that's going to be any good. This year he might be celebrating when he's winning races or standing on the podium. Next year he might be celebrating... Uh, not getting crashed out by some rookie driver at the back of the field, being happy to not get knocked out of Q1, being happy to finish 10th and score a point in a Williams. But hey, at the end of the day, he pretty much has a guaranteed race seat. Whether it be at an awful team, oh well, it's still a race seat. Logan Sargent can't say the same thing. Because he isn't just being screwed over, he's just being dead set, just dropped for being awful. Not again. I think what we all want is a championship battle. If you actually want to see a championship battle, like and subscribe. Otherwise, it will not happen. Yeah! <laughs> Gasly! <laughs> no, 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 not that guy. He's screwed himself over. But the guy he was talking about, Pierre Gasly. I'm not even going to start talking about back in the day where he had those teething troubles with Alpha Tauri, with Toro Rosso, with Red Bull. Those days are behind us. That was ages ago. And he agreed, he did prove to the world that he maybe potentially, maybe potentially deserved that Red Bull seat after getting that win in Monza. What do you do? 
And I can't lie, that win and some other podiums have carried his career ever since. To the point where he was too good for that Alpha Tauri seat and to the point where he's moved on and moved on to Alpine. Now, yes, 2021, 2022, 2023, they were different times in Formula 1. They were very, very different times. Times where Alpine won a race, times where Alpines were sometimes on the front row, times where they were scoring podiums on multiple occasions. And Gasly was promised a piece of the cake of the good life, the good life at the top of the field, not the life that he was used to being in the lower bottom of the field. He was promised a good car, a car where he'd be able to battle for wins, the championship, podiums. And honestly, podiums was the most he ever achieved in one of those Alpine cars, because time ran out in 2023 like it does, it ticks over to the next year. And 2024 comes out and literally everything about Alpine is crumbling into pieces. Not just Formula One. Le Mans was an absolute disaster. Oh, Alpine, Alpine. facing the wrong way. Not smoking. Yeah. That is big trouble oh. for the 35 car. Big impact into the wall for the two Alpines. Delivery looks like a toddler has just drawn on a piece of paper with a crayon. It's disgusting. Disgusting! Esteban Ocon has been terrorizing Pierre Gasly. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Now, if I were in my car, I'd look at that space and go, well, that's too small. And then I'd go find another. But that's not what a French person would do. And honestly, I guess that would be all fine if the team was at the top of the field battling for wins, championship and podiums. But the car is one of the slowest cars on the grid. He was promised something so fantastic, so great. French driver in a French team winning the championship. Wouldn't that just seal the deal of everything on the entire planet? That's like Lewis Hamilton, English driver, winning in a McLaren, an English team. It was beautiful until... And I guess for Pierre Gasly, it also could have been beautiful but there's nothing beautiful about being knocked out of Q1 every race. Your teammate terrorizing the entire team and the team just being tits up. What doesn't help at all is that 2023 to 24 wasn't like an entire big regulation change. Like Mercedes got it terribly wrong in 21 to 22. This was just an evolution. And a team that finished fourth in the constructors in 22, sixth in 23. And now who knows, they might be on the verge of finishing 10th. The downhill trajectory is honestly unfathomable. Now, yes, in 2023, McLaren were one of the worst cars on the grid. And in a couple races, they managed to bring it back. The only difference is between McLaren and Alpine is that McLaren are battling at the top of the field now. And... Alpine, they're not bringing any upgrades. There's going to be like five or so races where Alpine aren't getting upgrades. And isn't that kind of tragic with a team that's already pretty much the worst? But truly, what I think is the worst part of it all is that Gasly left RB Toro Rosso Alpha Tauri because he wanted to move up the field. But in today's day and age, RB are better, way, way better than Alpine could ever imagine to be this year. So it all doesn't make sense. Been screwed over. Alpine are awful. The road cars are cool, but that's the only thing that that team has some... Oh, I don't know. I honestly can tell you. There's no doubt about it that in one point in Alex Albon's Formula 1 career, he screwed his own career over. And it all came down to one thing, and that was just horrible performances. Now, yes, these performances are matching some of Sergio Perez's at the moment, but I guess Sergio Perez is getting a tad lucky with the time and place that he's in Red Bull, which is kind of sad to see. But that was ages ago. That was years ago. Now, 2024 is a totally different year. It's a different time in Formula 1. It's a time where... Things are quite uncertain, but one thing is for certain is that Alex Albon has been screwed over by Williams. Williams gave in his break in back to Formula 1 season in 2022. And the two full seasons that he's been in Williams haven't been the greatest. I agreed, it, it is Williams. But at the time where Alex Albon joined Williams, they were literally plumb lost, the worst team on the grid. And the only way to go than being literally at the bottom level is to go up. And they did that for a season, but then they plummeted back down to being one of the worst on the grid. What doesn't help is that everything that Williams is doing is being compromised by Logan Sargent. All of the money that could be spent on developing the car 
is being spent to repairing Logan Sargent's car. Why, you might be asking. Your average Logan Sargent race looks like someone's just been struck by a wrecking ball. 2023 proved that Alex Albon has grown as a driver and that he can actually put up stonking performances. Compete with Lando, Ocon, compete with the top dogs on some occasions. Qualifying P4, qualifying P4, finishing P7 in a Williams that isn't good at all. And now uh, things haven't gone too well. Points are minimum near zero at the moment. And it doesn't help that Williams are going to be sacrificing the 2024 car, sacrificing the 2025 car to put all of their research, development, money, funds, everything towards 2026. Alex Owen being hugely invested in the Williams project might bite him soon because yes, his contract might be fat. Yes, it might be a long contract, but say 2024 is an awful year. 2025 is an awful year and say Williams get it wrong for 2026. Then what? He has not only been screwed over for the last couple years, being given a bad car after bad car after bad car, through having bad teammates after even more bad teammates. You think you couldn't get any worse than Nicholas Latifi? Guess what? You can in Logan Sargent. And say they get 2026 wrong, that's another year which he's going to get screwed over. But on the flip side, if he plays this massive gamble correctly and is at Williams for the length of time that he is losing after losing after losing, to then 2026 comes around and potentially Williams might get it right for the first time since what felt like like 10 years, maybe longer. It's kind of depressing and sad that Pastor Maldonado has more race wins in a Williams than Alex Albon. It's Pastor Maldonado ahead of Fernando Alonso. The amount of faith that Albon has in Williams for 2026 is humongous declining contracts from pretty much every other great team on the grid to put faith in Williams. I guess we'll see in 2026, but for now, he is being screwed over massively. I think we're all aware of some guy called Fernando Alonso. Back in the day, he won a couple championships. Back in the day, he had a couple cool overtakes. Back in the day, he had a couple cool celebrations. And back in the day, that transfer move to Renault was actually a good transfer move. But ever since the day he decided to hang up those Renault gloves and move over to a different team, it seems like every other career path he's taken has been awful. From the absolute disaster class of the first McLaren days to the other absolute fraudulent masterclass of the second stint of the Renault days, to my guy being so bored in the other McLaren days that is chilling in a hammock, to whatever else has gone on in his career. And at first value, it seemed like the choice from Fernando Alonso moving away from that Alpine family and going over to the Aston Martin family, it started to look promising. It started to look like Fernando Alonso for the first time in his driver career in a long time has made a good choice. A good choice to move from Alpine to Aston Martin. Aston Martin being a team back then riddled with problems. Slow car got launched all as a driver. didn't seem too good but you know what actually seemed pretty nice and sweet attending the track in Bahrain overtaking Carlos Sainz overtaking Hamilton and stepping on the podium for the first time in a long time in an Aston Martin in your first race and it wasn't just the first race race after race after race podium after podium after podium but all good things always come to an end Hamilton's dominance that came to an end but the championship can only be won by one and it's going Dutch and it seems like Verstappen is slowly being put down this year by Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris and Aston Martin's amazing run of form also ended and for like the last year their car has not only just been mid but been worse than mid for them, it's been a struggle to stand on the podium. It's been a struggle to sometimes even get into the point. And it seems like that career move wasn't the greatest either way. That potentially being Fernando Alonso's last ever contract signing. And now he's stuck with a car that isn't good. Stuck with Lance Stroll and stuck with a plummeting team, which who knows when they might even contest for the championship. We've seen other teams spike up in form. McLaren, one of the worst cars on the grid, to now consistently fighting at the top. Aston Martin, one of the worst cars on the grid, 
were good and now have plummeted back down. It seems like that career move wasn't as good as we all thought at the time. Obviously, the only reason why Fernando Alonso is still in Formula 1 is because he still sees himself winning a championship. But I don't see that with the current Aston Martin. Potentially with the Aston Martin at the start of 2023. But it seems like, yet again, he's been screwed over and another driver that has been screwed over this year. For the last couple years or so, we've been living, dreaming in the Formula 1 world pretty much single-handedly owned by Red Bull and Max Verstappen. The defending champion on top. Max Verstappen wins the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. It's another Grand Prix victory. Wins from Paul, the Japanese Grand Prix. And at the start of 2024, it seemed no different. Verstappen was still winning every single race and that Dutch anthem composition of music was still being played every single race. But the thing is, I believe that Max Verstappen has also, just like all of the other drivers which I've talked about, been screwed over by Red Bull. Oh, how can you say that? Red Bull are winning everything. How can you say they're leading the championship? Yeah, yes, they might be leading the constructors, the drivers, but for how long will they be leading that? Because the Red Bull car is plummeting into the ground, it has some teething troubles with certain tracks. Tracks where, you know, you can't just go straight in a straight line and corners around corners. You've got to use the curbs. You've got to be creative with the lines that you're taking. It might not just be the car which is holding back Red Bull or Verstappen. Sergio Perez, he might grief Red Bull's constructors hopes because whilst other teams have two good drivers scoring podiums, podiums, wins, wins every single race, Red Bull only have one and then they have Sergio Perez, which has had a disaster class for the last couple races. Is it just a blip in performance or is he going to be this bad for the rest of the season? Last year, it seemed like Verstappen and Red Bull were two immovable objects from P1 on the podium. But this year is, is a lot different. Charles Leclerc's winning races. Carlos Sainz is winning races. Lando Norris is winning races. And we've seen it in the past, just like the 2009 season. Braun, Button, they started off good. But throughout the season, it got worse and worse and worse. Luckily, luckily, luckily for Button, he managed to clutch up that championship in the last race. But with this season being more races in the everything, more people contending potentially for the championship, and Red Bull having a big anchor, which is Perez. You know what? He's not even an anchor. He's just someone who steers that Titanic into that iceberg willingly, making the whole ship sink. I guess time will tell whether Verstappen has been screwed over by Red Bull this year, whether he wins the constructors, whether he wins the drivers, whether next year's car is any good because Adrian Newey is leaving. Although Verstappen is leading the constructors, leading the drivers, it seems like a pretty shitty position to be in because you don't know what's going to happen with that team. I feel like it's just a self-destructing time bomb before it all just blows up. Anyway, with that said, hope you enjoyed the video. If you think that any other drivers have been screwed over or you disagree with, say, some of the drivers that I think have been screwed over, put it down in the comments. I'll be reading those because it's interesting and you guys are interesting. Anyway, like and subscribe whilst you're down there and don't die. Otherwise, everybody will be sad. You can't watch the videos and then the whole world goes into panic, sadness, and even more sadness. Have a safe and fantastic rest of the day and peace. That's all, folks.